How to reprogram the ATtiny85 fuses with a high voltage programmer directly on the Digispark board without having to modify that board. I revised both the sketch and the schematic design for the ATtiny high voltage fuse programmer. I removed the series 1K resistors on the data lines because now the sketch is debugged. Initially it may be good to have series resistors because if the code is not fully debugged and there's a chance you might accidentally try to drive either high or low a certain signal on both ends then you don't want to be driving a high on one end and a low on the other and create a short circuit so with a resistor all you're doing is creating a tiny heater it'll have five volts on one side ground on the other and it'll dissipate some heat but now I'm more confident with the code and this will control the target device to keep it in reset and power it up properly and I don't expect if there's any program running in the target device that it's going to get a chance to try to drive any of these signals while I'm trying to drive them from Arduino. And another reason I wanted these series resistors gone, I want to try programming an ATtiny85 directly on a Digispark board, not just having a chip alone here. Here's the Digispark schematic with the ATtiny85 on it, and there's not too much on the board, but there are some things on the same pins that we need to program with. It is a 5 volt board, and we are using a 5 volt programming GPIO system, so it's okay to have 5 volts on this port with the LED and these USB ports with these circuits. But if I have series 1K resistors here, suddenly I'm making voltage dividers on these pins. So that will give me odd voltage levels here. But if I'm directly driving this, putting 5 volts or 0 volts, that's what these pins will see on the chip and these other small circuits hanging off of the ports just do their normal things. The main thing to watch out for is the fact that we need to put 12 volts on this reset pin and luckily there's nothing else connected here on the board. It just goes straight to this header. So it's okay to put 12 volts here and it's okay to put 5 volts and ground on the other I.O. pins, so it should be good. We would have to make sure we are not plugged into USB. We don't need any conflicts with USB 5 volts against what we are providing, and we need to fully take away 5 volts and turn it on when it's time to do so in the programming algorithm, so we can't have 5 volts here anyway, and we don't want USB data on these pins when we're trying to use them as programming pins. So when we want to do high voltage serial programming, we unplug it from USB and just connect up to these two headers. The other thing to watch for, now that it's not just a chip in a programmer, we have an actual circuit board. When we are powering this up with five volts, the programmer normally powers the target chip directly from a GPIO. It doesn't use much current. But now we do have this board. It has a couple of LEDs on it and some of these circuits that will be drawing current. So I'm going to use a separate high side switch. So instead of Arduino supplying five volts from GPIO, it's gonna use the same control pin and turn on a high side switch and give five volts straight from the regulator on the Arduino Uno board. So the power, ground, and data reset pins from these Digispark headers basically will connect up here where the normal target device would have gone in the programming circuit. Of course, this is pin one down here. It goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And again, this digital out eight is no longer going to provide VCC for the target. This is gonna control another circuit that gives five volts. So here's what that new setup will look like. This is the target device with pins one through eight that we just looked at on the breadboard diagram. Here's how the Digispark pins on the two headers will map over to the target device socket on the breadboard. But this VCC pin, where this is coming from Arduino and going to the target device, now instead it comes over to control this high side switch. We take five volts straight from the regulator on the Arduino Uno board. When the programmer wants to enable five volts, this line goes high 
turns on the NPN transistor, brings the gate of the PFET low to turn it on, and present 5 volts straight from the Arduino Uno regulator out to the target VCC DigiSpark board. So the DigiSpark board gets a clean 5 volt supply with enough current to power everything on here, including the target device. I could have controlled the gate of this FET directly from the Arduino pin, but then the logic would be inverted. I didn't want to have to make a special separate sketch with inverted control logic on VCC just to do the DigiSpark, so just adding this extra transistor inverts the logic and I can use the same sketch whether I'm doing DigiSpark or just an AT tiny chip directly on the target socket. And the FET I have on hand that I'm using for this high side switch is the 4435. It is a surface mount 8 pin chip, so I put it on one of those surface mount to through hole dip adapter boards so I can put it in the breadboard. The gate threshold voltage is between minus 1 to minus 3 volts, gate to source. So since I'm switching a 5 volt supply and it's being controlled between 5 volts and ground, this allows me to nicely turn on this FET to control 5 volts. It has a relatively low RDS on, so it makes a good load switch with minimal losses and it seems to work well in this application. One thing I had to change in the sketch, now that we are turning on VCC for an entire circuit, not just a chip, I noticed when I probed the 5 volt switching circuit, it does take longer for this 5 volt rail to ramp up. We have more things on this board that impact the ramp time. We have bulk capacitance. So over in the sketch, for convenience, I copied in a comment for the algorithm to do high voltage programming from the datasheet. The original method right here, which worked fine with just a chip alone, makes sure that VCC ramps up to at least 1.8 volts within 20 microseconds and then you can apply the 12 volt reset and so on. So originally my 5 volts ramped up very quickly, almost immediately, no problem. But now, as shown on this scope trace, 5 volts ramps up slower because it has to charge those capacitors on the board and things like that. 5 volts is the yellow trace and then 12 volts is the blue trace. So after several trials, I've seen 30 something to 40 something microseconds to get 5 volts ramped up. So there's an alternate algorithm here and basically all it says is if you can't be sure that you're going to ramp up enough within 20 microseconds because things are going to be lagging, just monitor the VCC rail and when you get high enough, then it's okay to turn on 12 volts and carry on. So I also made a reminder note for the future, maybe I can use an analog input on the Arduino Uno and monitor the VCC rail, and when it gets high enough, then I know to continue on. But for now, since I scoped it, I know that for DigiSpark, giving it 100 microseconds for VCC to ramp up should be more than enough time just for working on the bench. So after turning on VCC, I wait 100 microseconds and then I turn on 12 volts and carry on. Before I did this, I only had about 40 microseconds and sometimes it would work and sometimes it wouldn't. And that's how I realized VCC is ramping up slower. Ever since I changed it to wait 100, it works every time. So I've updated the sketch and schematic files on GitHub. Now let's just run the test again and make sure everything still works. This is the revised high voltage fuse programmer for the AT Tiny parts. I still have the Uno with all the data lines but without the 1K series resistors. This is where the target programming device would go, but right now I have wires going over to the DigiSpark board. I still have the 12 volt boost converter for the 12 volt reset transistor circuit right here, but instead of the 9 volt battery, I'm powering the boost converter directly from the 5 volt supply on the Arduino. 
A viewer on my other programmer video pointed out I could do this. I hadn't thought about it because I just scrapped everything together and I took the boost circuit with the battery from another project and just stuck it on here, but this is more efficient. I kept having issues where I forgot to connect up the 9 volt battery and I wondered why isn't this working? So now as long as everything's powered up, it'll be working. All of these data and power pins that would normally go to the chip directly now go over to Digispark. When the GPIO for VCC is turned on now, instead of directly powering the chip, it will turn on this high side switch and that will switch in five volts straight from the voltage regulator on Arduino. So we have more current available to power a board that has other loads, including LEDs, that the Arduino's GPIO can't really handle. Powering the chip alone is fine, but an actual board, it's better to give it a pure five volt source. So in the serial monitor, just like before, everything is set up. I can enter zero to read the fuses. Now that I gave it enough time for VCC to power up, everything's running. It detects the signature of an ATtiny85. It reads the fuses and E15DFE are the fuse settings if I enter option one here for Digispark defaults. So let's just make sure it works to program. I'll enter option two. That will set the fuses slightly differently to change the function of the reset pin. So again, it read them to make sure what they are. It wrote them and now it's E1DDFE. I can read them again just to see E1DDFE. Now that the fuses on Digispark can be reprogrammed with the high voltage programmer circuit without having to take any parts off Digispark, the brick pile should get smaller and smaller instead of bigger and bigger. 